hey everyone welcome to my channel this is the fourth LD tutorial and in this tutorial we will study about random access procedure in LDE but before starting that I would like to tell you what we studied in uh, in last three lectures so we switched on NUE in an LTE network so first of all frequency synchronization takes place and in this UE scans the center frequency okay after that UE decodes the PSS and SSS from E node B and after decoding them, UE is able to uh, find out the PCI of E node B and we know the uh, location of reference signals it dep uh, depends on the PCI so UE comes to know the location of reference signals reference signals reference signal tells about the means downlink channel estimation you can say you can calculate the RSRP that is reference signal receive power with the help of this reference signals and after that uh, it decodes the SIB1 SIB1 carries the QRX level min and with the help of QRX level min UE will calculate SRX LEV and this is the means measured uh, RSRP you can say QRX LEV measured minus QRX LEV min if you find out this SRX LEV to be greater than 0 then it will go uh, for further procedures uh, for this E node B so this is the frequency synchronization frequency synchronization this is the cell search part and this is the cell selection part okay so after this uh, UE decodes SIP2 Uh, in third lecture I told you that SIP1 carries the uh, scheduling of other SIPs so SIP2 is one of them and uh, so you can say UE comes to know the location of SIP2 with the help of SIP1 so UE will decode this SIP2 uh, one thing I miss here it also decodes MIB here that is master information block for more details uh, refer my lecture number 3 on MIB and SIB ok so SIB2 <coughs> carries a very important uh, parameter ok let me write it here that SIB2 carries P RACH configuration index ok So, so SIP2 plays a very important role in this RACH procedure. First of all, let me tell you why we need RACH procedure, that is random access procedure. Well, because uh, till now, means till SIP2, uh, U is in listening mode only, listening whatever U is uh, telling to UE. Okay and these informations are, this information is common to all the UEs. So with the help of RACH procedure, you will get the uplink scheduling resources. Means resources using which you uh, can talk to E node B in uplink direction. That is in from U E to E node B in uplink direction. Okay, means you can or means in another way you can say you you will get the P U S C H and PUCCH to talk to E node B. These are uplink channels. PUCCH is used to send some data and PUCCH is used to 
send signaling or you can say control data okay this is the purpose of main purpose of ratch procedure so with the help of p ratch configuration index ue selects a preamble uh, and it will send it to e node b so after sip 2 ue will select preamble means selecting a preamble and transmitting it to e node b means uh, this the purpose of this procedure is means you can say u is telling to e node b hey i am here and i want to talk to you this means uh, this is the purpose of this selecting preamble and transmitting it to e node b now the question is means uh, what kind of format u is supposed to use for this preamble and at what location u is supposed to send this preamble so for this this uh, means this sip 2 means with the help of this uh, information provided in sip 2 that is p dash configuration index u e comes to know what format of preamble u e have to use and at what location u uh, e will send this means preamble uh, let me show you a table Uh, this is the table uh, that means, uh, means suppose uh, UE decoded the SIP2 and find out that P ratch configuration index is set to 0. So if it is 0, so UE will use preamble format 0. I will tell you briefly means what format means what are the preamble formats. So here just for now this means uh, UE will use preamble format 0 and it will send it on even system frame numbers only and in subframe number 1 only let me draw a diagram then it would be more easy to understand this thing suppose this is these are the system frame numbers this is first system frame number the second one this is third one this is fourth one and so on so this is zero subframe number, system frame number. This is the first system frame number. This is second. This is third. Fourth system frame number, and so on. So suppose P ratch configuration index is zero. Means you decoded the SIP two and find out that P ratch configuration index set to zero. So what we have seen in uh, our table for p dash configuration index 0 you will send a preamble in even system frame numbers only means either you will send preamble in system frame number 0 or in system frame number 4 or in 6 or in 8 means it means system frame number should be even and we know LT frame is of 10 millisecond and each LT frame or system frame has 10 subframes so this is 0, 1, 2, dot 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 till 9 so total 10 subframes are there in each system frame number. so suppose uh, system frame number even system number even system frame number 2 is selected and UE will send preamble in first subframe only because this system frame number is 1 ok so if uh, if system frame number 4 is selected then also preamble can be sent in system frame number 1 only ok ok and the most common p dash configuration index which is used is p dash configuration index 14 because if you set this 14 as p dash configuration index then you can send preamble in any system frame number 
and in any subframe. So if 14 is set as p-dash constriction index then uh, you will select any system frame number and any subframe number okay and there are total 64 preambles available at UE and the format there are four formats of preamble 0 1 2 3 each formats have different cyclic prefixes and different sequence time there is a table for this, these formats let me show you so for preamble format 0 this is the cyclic prefix time and this is the sequence time okay so this, this depends on operator to operator okay so <clears throat> So total 64 preambles are available at uh, UE site. So you decode SIP2 and it will transmit preamble. The channel that you will use it's PRATCH that is physical random access channel. It is mapped to RATCH channel in uplink direction. Okay. And I have already told you the location means location where uh, you will send this preamble means the location is decided on the basis of PRH confusion index which UE has decoded in SIP2 okay the fo and format is also decided with the help of this PRH confusion index so UE will decode this uh, message uh, sorry E node we will decode this message now and calculate some parameters and they are R A R N T I that is a radio access radio network temporary identifier timing advance E node we will calculate timing advance and T C R N T I will calculate and also it will calculate the uplink scheduling grant that's the purpose of batch procedure and TCR NTI this is the temporary identifier that is temporary cell radio network temporary identifier it is assigned to UE it's on temporary basis in a particular cell and this is the uplink scheduling grant that is uh, the resources are allocated to UE uh, to talk to E node B in uplink direction so in response of this uh, transmit preamble message E node B sends a random access response message and uh, it will enclose all these details in RAR message ok and uh, downlink channel for RAR is used PDSCH and we will decode this uh, RAR and save all these details uh, and as we got this uplink resources so now you can send RRC connection request RRC connection request and in other steps you will be able to establish RRC connection. This will will cover in another lecture. So, this is the RATCH procedure. I hope uh, you like the video. Thank you.